Okay, method number three, formula. The formula is used when you have a question like this which cannot be factored. 3 times 7 is 21. There's nothing that multiplies to make 21 and subtracts to make 5. Okay, so it cannot be factored. Or, as I said, if it's hard to factor or if you're not very good at factoring, you can use this. Now here's what the formula looks like. What Joe Quadratic did is he said, well, we always have something squared and something not squared, almost always. And we have some number in front here and some number in front there. And we have some other number like that. So if we set things up that way, he said, here is what you get for x. You take the opposite of b. Please read that minus b as the opposite of b. You get one answer by adding the square root. You get the other answer by subtracting it. Inside the square root, you're going to take b and square it, and then subtract 4 times a times c. Please make sure you put this divide sign across the whole thing. You divide your whole answer by 2 times a. If you do that, then automatically out will pop the two answers to your question. Okay, and this can be used for all quadratics. Now, in our case, let's look at our original question up here. Then a is equal to 3. b is equal to plus 5 and c is equal to minus 7. Okay, so here is the answer to x. x is the opposite of b, so since b is plus 5, I write minus 5 there. Plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times a which is 3 times b, uh, c which is negative 7 all divided by 2 times a which is 3. It looks a bit complicated especially the first time you try it but after a while you get really quick at this. Not quite as quick as factoring though. Now the order of operations says we must do everything above the bar first and we must do everything inside the square root sign first. So that's 25, which is 5 squared. Now I notice that it's going to be a minus 4 times 3 times a negative 7. Okay, that'll be a minus a negative 84. What I do at this time is instead of writing subtract negative 84, I automatically change that to a plus sign right away. It's just a little habit I've got into. The bottom is 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay, we now have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 109 over 6. Many times you can leave your answer just exactly like that and it's okay. If the question says find it to three decimal places or something like that, then here's how you'd have to work it out. You take one answer and add the square root of 109. Divide your answer by six. And you take your other answer and subtract the square root of 109. And divide your answer by six. Now since the square root of 109 is 10.44 I get that as one answer and that is the other answer okay 
and this would be 5.44 divided by 6 and this would be negative 15.44 divided by 6. So finally, out would come my answer. As 9067. Which rounds off to 907. Or... 15.44 divided by 6, 2.573, negative 2.573. So that would be my answers to two decimal pla three decimal places. Okay, so using a formula is one of the ways to solve something if it cannot be factored or if it's hard to factor.